As we look at graphing parabolas or what we also call quadratics, there's a lot of different forms that you might see uh, the actual quadratic equation written in. And so those three forms, we call those intercept form, standard form, and what we call graphing form. And the last one is really the one that we're focusing in this chapter, chapter nine of our, of our CPM Integrated Two book. So in the past, we've talked about intercept form or factored form. This is kind of the, a generic example of what it might look like. And, and this is actually with, with numbers in play here. And so the advantage of, of this form is that when you look at the equation in factored or intercept form, you can immediately see what the x-intercepts are. And that's why it's called the intercept form. By looking at this first set of parentheses, I happen to know immediately that the x-intercepts are three comma zero, that's gonna be one of them. And then I look at the other set of parentheses and I know my other x-intercept is gonna be negative nine comma zero. So that's the advantage of the, of the first type of, of uh, form of our equation. We have a second type that's called standard form, which is another type that we used a lot. And sometimes we try to factor this or use the quadratic formula. And there's really two advantages to this form. One is, is that it's immediately set up for the quadratic formula. So I already know A is three, B is five and C is negative 10. Also, I happen to know just by looking at that, that the y-intercept is gonna be zero comma negative 10. Because if I were to plug in a zero in for X, I'm gonna get zero and zero and negative 10. So I can really just look at the C value and that tells me what the y-intercept is. The final form is the one we're just starting to get into in this chapter is called graphing form. And it looks like this kind of generically. And with numbers, it might look like this. So immediately when you look at this, what's great about it is in factored form, I happen to know the vertex is going to be negative 2. It's what makes uh, this parentheses equal to 0. So x would have to be negative 2, comma, whatever number is on the outside following. So negative 7. And the reason why it's called graphing form is if you were actually making a t-table right now and you set up a bunch of values. I know negative two, negative seven is gonna be my vertex and I can plug in a negative one and a negative three and I'm gonna get the same Y value. And I can also plug in a zero and I can plug in negative four and I'd also get the exact same Y value there. And then I've got my five points and I'm ready to go for graphing. So the big thing that we're learning how to do is not only how to use this when it's in graphing form, but also how to convert from standard form to graphing form. So I have two examples here. And we're going to be using uh, the method that we've been using in class called completing the square, although we don't quite do the entire method. So let's go and get started here. So let's take a look at the first one here. It's y equals x squared minus 8x plus 7. So to complete the square, what we normally do is we take this negative or this plus 7 here, excuse me, and we would want to move it onto the other side by subtracting 7 on both sides. So at that point, we get y minus 7 equals x squared minus 8x. And then we've talked about completing the square at this point. So let's go ahead and complete the square with, eight, with x squared and negative 8x. So I'm going to go ahead and make the box. So here's my box right here. I'm going to go ahead and put x squared here. And then we split the negative 8x in half. So negative 4x, negative 4x. So then we'd have x and x, and then minus 4 and minus 4. So our dimensions are the same here. The length and width are both x minus 4, hence the square. Then finally, to complete it, we need to figure out, well, what number would go here? So the number that would go here, negative 4 times negative 4 is 16. So what we're going to do then is we're going to add 16 to both sides. So when we do it on the left side of the equation, 16 minus 7 would be 9. So we're going to get y plus 9. And over here on the right side, x squared minus 8x plus 16 can be written as x minus 4 squared. And then finally, to have it just so it's y equal to, we subtract 9 on both sides. So I'm going to subtract 9, and we wind up with y equals x minus 4 in parentheses squared minus 9. And so immediately what we know is we know the vertex is at 4, negative 9, and we're, we're in business. So that's kind of the technique here. It's, it's kind of like completing the square, although not entirely, because we don't actually solve and, and, and find an answer per se like we did before but we do use the beginning part of the technique. So let's try it over here where we have f of x instead of y. And as we know, f of x and y really are synonymous. So I'm just gonna call it y for now and I can always go back and change it later. So once again, what we're gonna do is, we're gonna subtract three. So we wanna get the x squared and the x's all on one side together. So I'm gonna subtract three on this side. So I'm gonna wind up with y minus three 
equals x squared plus 10x. And then we're going to go ahead and we're going to complete the square. So I'm going to go ahead and draw my square out over here. x squared, I'm going to cut the 10x in half. So that means 5x goes in one box, 5x goes in the other box. And when we start doing the dimensions, x and x, x times x is x squared. If this is a positive 5, 5 times x is 5x. This must be a positive 5, 2. So once again, our dimensions are the same, hence the square. And if we take 5 times 5, we get 25. So if I want to complete the square, I need to go ahead and add 25 to both sides. So I'm going to add 25. 25 minus 3 is 22, so we get y plus 22. And on this side, we can rewrite this as x plus 5 quantity squared. Then to finish it up, we go ahead and subtract 22. Subtract 22. So therefore, y equals x plus 5 quantity squared minus 22. And once again, why would we want to do this is now we know the vertex. The vertex is negative 5 comma, negative 22. And then we can go ahead and set up a t-table, kind of like we did back here, and we could graph that. So that's how you convert from standard to graphing form.